Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I am ready at long last to do my full review on the Benchmade bailout. Now, would it have been pretty easy for me to do a review on this knife right when I got it? Probably, because this knife is so similar to the Benchmade bug out. If you watched my Benchmade bug out review, you'll already know I love the Benchmade bug out. I carry it a lot, I use it a ton, I have put it through much harder paces than the average bug out user or owner ever will, and uh, I'm super confident in the knife, and it is the best knife, in my opinion, in current existence, especially for its blade size, at disappearing in the pocket. It is so lightweight and so slim. And the profile is perfect. It's just got a great deep carry clip on it. Everything about it, all the ingredients come together to make it my favorite knife, undeniably, to actually have in my pocket. Now, the bailout, as you can see, is basically a slightly, and I do mean slightly larger bug out. It is hardly any bigger. Um, the biggest differences are gonna be a couple of things. One. When you look at the handle shape, the bailout has this guard on the spine and down here in the swell. So it keeps your forward finger locked in. I guess down here it's about the same actually on the bug out. So it's really just this hump on top where you've got a thumb ramp now. That's a difference. This one, flat all the way across. This one, your thumb wants to stop right there. Can you put your thumb up on the blade? Yes. Is it uncomfortable to do so? No. Is it less comfortable than putting your thumb forward on the bug out? Yeah, you can feel that nub there. So that's a difference. Um, the other big difference is something that I changed the second that I finished filming my unboxing of this. I threw a different backspacer on this because as you can see, the bug out just has a couple of barrel spacers. One here, one here. That's what's keeping your scales separated at the back there. They are on this one, anodized this cool kind of bronze color to match the thumb studs. They look fine to me. I like it. It's a nice open construction. On this guy, for some reason, Benchmade decided it was a good idea to put the stupidest backspacer, in my opinion, that exists onto this knife. They put an aluminum, stupid lanyard hole. Just, I, I, if you can't tell, I can't stand the backspacer that comes on this knife. It just looks bad, in my opinion. It functions even worse than it looks. I can't stand putting my thumb on the top of the knife with it. It's like jagged and just annoying. And the deep carry clip is meant to make it so no knife sticks out of your pocket. And then instead, when you got that dumb backspacer, it sticks up. I can't stand it. So I put this backspacer in here. This one is a rock scale design. Um, I think they call it their geared texture backspacer. It's titanium and uh, it's got this kind of well done jimping all the way around it and it's anodized to this bronze color i really like it i think it looks great functions great that's a must in my opinion so everything that i say about this knife i'm going to say it as if i'm assuming that you will also do the same thing to yours if you do buy one of these i'm going to review this knife with this backspacer not the garbage that it comes with um, the other difference between the bug out and the bailout is going to be usually blade shape. The bailout comes as a tanto, but the wizards over at River's Edge Cutlery are amazing. And when you are picking the bug out, or sorry, the bailout on their site, it's going to get me. When you're picking the bailout on the River's Edge Cutlery site, you go to add it to your cart, there's an option. It drops down. It's basically, do you want this as a tanto or do you want us to regrind it as a drop point? It's that easy. You select drop point, put it in your cart, order it, still comes in my experience every bit as fast as it would have if you got a tanto and they were just sending you the box like it still ships incredibly quick like next day and they get it out to you and it looks like bench made ground this knife from the factory it is not a hack job it's just a perfectly well done drop point the profile you'll see is now remarkably similar to the bug out the bug out has a great blade in my in my opinion this blade shape is super usable, it works great, and it's just excellent. So I prefer generally drop points to Tantos. So for me, that was a huge win to be able to get this knife in a drop point. Now, I'm gonna set the bug out down 
and talk a little bit about just the bailout. The only other difference is blade steel. Now this one is in CPM 3V. 3V is a steel that's focused on toughness. So the bug out is my kind of ideal EDC knife. Like wherever I'm going, whether I'm running errands, whether I'm in basketball shorts, sweatpants, jeans, slacks, it can go in any pair of pants and disappear into the pocket. It's super comfortable, whether I'm on a road trip or I'm up in the mountains, it doesn't matter. Knife is super comfortable. This one feels the same to me in pocket. It feels just like I'm carrying my bug out, but I get 3V blade steel, which is a little bit tougher. I get that thumb ramp, which locks my hand in in a slightly different way. And really, those are the differences. So the reason why I wanted the bailout why it makes sense in my mind to have this knife in addition to the bug out is because as much as I have used the bug out out in places like this for things that a lot of people probably wouldn't subject theirs to and it has done it well um, it's S30V blade steel 3V has some mechanical advantages if you will being designed for toughness like this steel is it will be more capable in this type of environment going through hard materials clearing brush and I, I mean i'll do all kinds of stuff with this knife i've already tested it extensively enough to feel really confident in it um and it's just it's science that this knife will be tougher than s30v will i guess is what i'm trying to say so the idea behind this one is not to replace my bug out i will still use my bug out as my edc focused ultra lightweight disappear in the pocket folder I get it gets carried by me frequently both as a primary or as a secondary um, it's just super versatile this one is going to be my lightweight hiking focused like outdoor folder a lot of the time when I'm hiking if I'm not caring about shedding ounces I'll carry a much larger much thicker much heavier folder something that will be more capable just because of its size than this knife will but there are times when I'm hiking and I'm not bringing as much gear as I can to film and I'm not bringing a mate to drink and a bunch of water and like just like gear for no reason um, there are times when I'm hiking to get a hike done and that's a very different thing than coming out just for fun and exploring and not caring about how much weight is on my back or in my pockets perfect example would be in the next couple of weeks I plan to hike to the top of Mount Wilson which normally I'm used to pointing north for I'm actually on the back side of it now but from the base to hike up to Wilson the way I want to do it I think it's about 17 miles 18 miles round trip um, if I'm not mistaken and you gain a lot of elevation like a significant amount of elevation because you start essentially at sea level and I think Wilson is like I don't want to be wrong it's over 5,000 feet um, anyways that is a long day of hiking and on a hike like that do you think I'm gonna have extra folders on me or do you think I'm gonna bring my Spyderco tough which weighs a half a pound and is just gigantic and no that's not gonna be the type of knife I want to have with me in a few months I also hope to hike Mount Whitney again that's a, a day of just like pushing out miles just covering ground, gaining elevation, and you want to be as lightweight as you can in situations like that. I'm not an ultralight backpacker or anything like that, um, but this knife is perfect for a lightweight roll like that. I'll probably have my fixed blade on my pack because I love having my fixed blade there, but the knife that will be in my pocket when I'm doing serious hikes like those is going to be this because it's 3V blade steel. It's a knife and a platform that I already have tested, that I have used enough to be ultra comfortable with, and that I'm just confident in. Um, a lot of people, when they first get a bug out or a bailout, or I assume the mini bug out, um, they feel like it feels cheap because it's so lightweight and plasticky, and it's definitely plasticky, I'll say that. Um, and you can flex these scales together and there's all kinds of people have talked about those aspects of this knife but I have been so rough on my bug out I've already been really rough on this and I have not found their limits yet 
which is impressive to me because I'm not nice to my knives, especially out here. So yeah, I just, I have total confidence in the platform. Um, this knife, it's funny, it was actually, it's way better centered now that I have chopped with it and stuff. In fact, right now it looks perfectly centered. Um, so apparently this knife needed to be used a little bit, but yeah, I just, I have plans for this knife and my summer plans of some serious hikes include this being in my pocket. And I really like the idea of having a designated lightweight outdoor folder. Um, Cause sometimes those ounces do actually matter um, when you're going a long enough distance for a long enough time and you're pushing your limits. And uh, beyond that, will you always feel a difference of like, this is a, what, a two ounce knife. If I'm carrying a knife that's four ounces, am I really gonna feel that weight? Probably not, realistically. But the thinness and the profile of this knife are every bit as much an advantage, in my opinion, as the weight. Because the way this feels in pocket, um, it makes a difference. When I'm climbing up and over stuff and I have a big beefy folder in my pocket, I can feel that it's there. If I'm articulating my legs too much, it can start to kind of jab into me and just be uncomfortable. And it can also be more prone to like snagging on stuff because it's a bigger bulge in my pocket. And this just, it's so slim and trim and it just, yeah, these feel awesome inside of a pocket. So that's gonna be that. Um, I guess, yeah, I, I don't know really much what else to say about this knife in terms of what you'd probably expect from like a typical or like a tabletop knife review. Um, the blade stock is nice and thin. The edge came super sharp. It has stayed really sharp. I haven't even stropped this knife. I've done nothing to it. It feels every bit as sharp as it did after all of the testing that I've put this through, all of the everyday use I've put it through having in my pocket. It's just still stupid sharp. Um, profile is super thin. The ergos are excellent for me. Everything about this knife, if you watch my bug out review, you can basically just copy paste. It works on this as well. Now, the special things about this one, like I mentioned, are gonna be that it's reground. River's Edge Cutlery kills it on that. Thank you again, guys, for this knife in this configuration because part of why I never got one was because it was a Tanto. And I've talked about this already. I don't need to get into weeds too much about it, but I just prefer drop points. Some knives I think Tantos really work on and should have Tantos. This isn't one of them. I prefer it in a drop point. And then the fact that I swapped this backspacer also just makes it super usable for me. Um, moving forward, I'm probably going to actually add a few more things to this knife. I have some plans for it just to kind of keep making it my ultimate. <laughs> like this has a, a designated role, which is rare for me. I have a lot of knives that have a ton of overlap. Like when I'm picking a knife to go in my pocket in the morning and I'm just having a normal day, I have so many options to pick from. But with this being like my designated lightweight outdoor folder that I'm going to grab when that's what I need. I just want to take it to like a level of perfection. So I plan on doing a scale swap on this. Eventually the ones that I'm leaning towards right now aren't in stock. So it may just be a little bit of a waiting game to get those scales. And uh, when I do jump on a set of scales, I'll do an install video and probably kind of an update as well. But I'm going to update the scales and then I'm also planning to update the hardware so that it'll all be um, anodized bronze to match this backspacer. And when I do that, I'll probably steal these thumb studs off of the bug out and put them here and put the black ones on here, which I think will still, that'll look really cool on the Ranger Green to have black thumb studs anyways. So those things are still to come. But other than that, like really when you get down to it at the end of that process, all that's going to be exactly how this knife typically comes from Benchmade's factory will be the internals and the pocket clip, I guess. Um, like those internal little mini liners um, that nest in there and the axis lock and I guess the pivot, those will all be Benchmade still, um, but the blade will have been reground, the backspacer will have been swapped, the scales will have been swapped, the hardware will have been swapped, everything will be changed essentially. But that's okay with me um, because is there a 
even after all that stuff is on and I've switched the scales, maybe this knife will be two and a half ounces then. Um, is there a two and a half ounce 3V blade steel, ultra slim, ultra lightweight, outdoor focused folding knife that exists right now? If there is, please let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't really exist. There are some other really lightweight folders uh, and there's some that I mean to try. Um, soon I hope to try like the Hogue Deca. I'm really, really intrigued by that. I think that could be a good option. <clears throat> there's a few other things out there, but this is just a platform that I know works so well for me. So for me to keep dumping a little bit more money into it and just make it like perfect so that it's my one knife that I grab in that situation, sounds like a lot of fun to me. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I guess that'll be my review on the Benchmade bailout. Um, again, kudos to River's Edge Cutlery. It's a game changer in my opinion that you can just so easily have this come as a drop point. Some people probably love that it's a Tanto, so that doesn't affect you so much. Um, but to me, that was a big deal. And uh, if you're looking at backspacers, this one is fantastic. It's from Rock Scale Design. Um, I'll link to the knife down below on River's Edge Cutlery site, and then I'll link to this backspacer down below. Um, I don't know that these are always in stock. I think they kind of come in waves, the, uh, the backspacers. So it may just be timing if you're looking for that as well. But yeah, that'll be that. This is the bailout.